Hi, John Fugler here. Let's spend a few minutes retreating with God, kicking off another week together. Our theme this week is joy. Here's a great passage for you to start with. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. I can't think of uh, any greater, pure, more complete joy we can experience than the joy of Jesus himself. He describes this joy as full. He says that your joy may be full, that my joy may be in you, that your joy may be full. His, his joy is full. Don't you want that? Of course you do. I do. <laughs> Why in the world would we try joy substitutes when the real thing is already planted inside us if we know Jesus? My joy substitutes, yeah, I got them. They range anywhere from financial security to comfort to, I got to admit it, a Dodger victory. <laughs> I got several others, too, if I really take an inventory. How about you? Where does your joy come from? The correct answer is Jesus, but don't give that answer unless you find that it's true for you, okay? Be honest. We let joy substitutes crowd out our Savior. That's why we go from one to another. They don't satisfy for very long. That my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Getting back to that verse. When I hear Jesus saying that to me, I picture joy as a a seed waiting to grow. Jesus' joy is inside me, but it only grows when it's nourished. What makes it grow? Abiding in Jesus' love. Uh, There was a year where I began almost every day by camping on one certain verse. I guess it was my verse of the year. And it's familiar to you, I'm sure. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. That's from Deuteronomy 6, 5. I lived with that verse for a year. I remind myself that loving God is the most important thing I can do. I should find myself evaluating everything I do in light of whether I'm loving God by doing it. Loving God takes effort. All my heart, soul, and strength. And this love relationship with God isn't just one way. Jesus died on the cross out of a deep, deep love for me. God gave his only son because he loved the world so much. The nourishment for joy to grow is Jesus' love for us. It's plain and simple. Jesus' love for us. This kind of love is rich soil. Uh, Water and sunlight and rich soil all rolled into one. Just as a seed and plant draw on these elements to grow, we need to draw on Christ's love for our joy to grow. That my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Isn't that wonderful? I can't think of anything more joyful than experiencing the love of God. (laughs) I'm pretty excited about it when I really consider it, when I reflect on that. His love produces joy in our lives. Take a look at that growing thing inside you called joy. What is it today? Is it a seed? A seedling? Maybe a young plant? Or is it a thriving tree? So in the quietness of the moment, think about God's love for you. The secret to full joy is abiding in the love of God. We're going to go deeper here, and we're going to springboard off of this into our Time of read, reflect, and relate. And as we do that, we're going we're gonna to go to John 15, verses 9 through 11. John 15, 9 through 11, if you want to join me. If you can't, then go ahead and just listen along. We, we covered these verses when we first started out. We're going to go deeper with them. And I'd encourage you to go deeper in your relationship with Jesus in this, this very special time that you have with him, hopefully every day. I want to help you out with the 21-day Fresh Faith Experience. If you haven't gotten it yet, go get it at retreatingwithgod.org. It's a free download, 21-day Fresh Faith Experience. So John 15, 9 through 11, it'll sound familiar because we started with this. As the Father has loved me, so I have, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. 
These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Well, we've covered a lot in this passage. We've really taken it apart. In this time of reflection now, the first question is, as you think about it, what things stand out in this passage? Do I see anything new about God, or does this passage reinforce something I already know about him? What's the theme or message of this passage, or multiple themes and messages? Then we have four key application questions about the passage. First one is this, is there a promise for me to claim? Second, is there a sin for me to avoid? Third, is there a command for me to obey? And fourth, is there an example for me to follow? As we've been reflecting on these questions, just want to remind you that in, instead of just answering them quickly, really let the Holy Spirit work in your heart. For instance, uh, is there a command for me to obey? We had that question, and in the passage it says, Jesus says, abide in my love. <laughs> that is a command to obey, but don't let that your answer just stop there. Think about that. Reflect on that. What does it mean to abide in the love of Jesus. So as we ask these questions, I'm giving you time not just to answer them, but to have a conversation with God and really reflect on this and see what he brings to mind as you sit quietly before him. And we go to this final, most important question, and it's this, in what way or ways do I know the Father or Jesus better as a result of studying this passage? Now let's go to our third R, relate, relate to God. We've done read, reflect, and now relate. As a result of reflecting on the passage, take time to pray about the things God has brought to mind. Prayer is all about your relationship with God, and that's why we meet together three times a week to develop our relationship with God. And I encourage you to enjoy a conversation with Him now. It's also a good time to bring requests that you came with and present them before God. So take time now to relate to God. Take time to pray, and then I'll close us.
Jesus, thank you for your love for me. Thank you for your love for my brothers and sisters who are listening right now. And that you have given us your joy and your joy is full. And may our joy be full as we are in a love relationship with you, that your joy is in us. In your name I pray, amen. Well, as we close here, we're going to look at Philippians 3.8, as we always do, because it's about our relationship with Jesus. And I remind you to make sure you download your free 21-day fresh faith experience at retreatingwithgod.org. Philippians 3.8 What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Uh, The more we know Jesus, the more we'll love him. The more we love him, the more we know him. They go together, don't they? Uh, Thank you for joining me as we get this uh, week started on Retreating with God. This is a ministry of Fresh Faith 24-7. We'll be back for a midweek Time together in a couple days. Fresh Faith 24 7 is a place where you can retreat with God and get to know Him more deeply. Well, look forward to joining you next time.